स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया गुड मॉर्निंग सो वी कंटिन्यू विथ आर डिस्कशन ऑफ प्लॉट and yesterday we had been talking about uh, various levels of plot we have also discussed a number of uh, theoreticians related to the concept of plot so we will continue from there um i would like to draw your attention to rola bart a very significant theorist and his book an introduction to the structural analysis of narratives where and i quote bart narrative may incorporate articulated languages spoken or written pictures gestures it is present in myth legend fable short story epic history tragedy comedy pantomime painting cinema the history of the narrative begins with the history of mankind now narrative may this this is what we have been talking from the beginning of this uh, lecture on narrative and plot narrative could be verbal written or visual this is what rola bart is trying to say pictures tell a story gestures tell a story narrative is present in myth legend fable short story even clothes tell you a narrative okay people research on those things as well so uh, there is no no field where narrative is not present everything tells a story from there we will go on to seven kind of primary plots what are so we have already seen the theories of plots definitions of plot now let's look at various and we have also seen levels of plot we have also seen what gerard genet talk about uh, plot and time order frequency duration we ha- we have also seen the uh, narrator who is a narrator the unre- uh, unreliable narrator the reliable narrator the homodiegetic heterodiegetic and interdiegetic so three levels of narration and voice overs now here we talk about seven primary plots now um, you can look at these uh, uh, some of the stills so now uh, we have uh, christopher reeve doing superman on us and the plot is not superman plot but the kind of plot is achilles now why achilles why superman also achilles the achilles plot what yeah he is a weak spot and what spe- what a weak spot is that achilles he is a weak spot for him and in superman krypton 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 is a weak spot so all powerful hero indomitable indefatigable and it also tells you a story of overcoming all odds but then protagonist has a weak spot so in achilles it ends with a tragedy and in most superhero movies um, you know we want to see them winning so we don't have those but they do have a weak spot so can you think of more examples from popular culture the achilles plot can you think of more examples perhaps in spider man how with mary jane parker mary jane watson sorry mm. he t- he tries to stay away from her because he feels that the super villains would use her against him or something like but that but that's the case even in batman yeah so uh, perhaps but uh, not this yeah here it's actually a physical weak point so superman is a very good and very strong and example iron man how uh, the whatever perhaps the iron man yeah iron man could be seen as another good example his uh, heart is his weak point we also have the cinderella plot you can think of uh, the julia robert ca- uh, robert's character in uh, pretty woman and also rocky balboa his narrative so stories of transformation 
and transformation usually for the better, the underdog rises against all odds, just like Cinderella. So, this is called the Cinderella plot. Again, these plots tell you a rags to riches story and invariably have a fairy tale ending. Can you give me more examples like apart from Rocky and Pretty Woman? My Fair Lady, yeah. My Fair Lady is um, a Cinderella plot. Anything else in recent times? My Left Foot, Daniel Day Lewis, an Irish film for which he won the best as Oscar award, again is a Cinderella story. Rags to riches, the protagonist rising and making it big against all odds. We have the Jason plot. Now, Jason plot is about quest. Okay, see, all these are classic narratives from which we take these names and apply it to our um, film studies. So, and our, plot, our uh, readings of narratives. So, Jason plot means quest for a cause. And this is something that we have seen in uh, Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces also. So, good examples would be Thelma and Louis, although it ends in a tragic way, both of them dying at the end, but still it is a quest for something. Could they, here they are on, on a quest for their identities. Lord of the Rings, again a classic example. John Wayne's The Searchers is another example where there is a quest. The hero is on a quest for something. Um, it is a very ambiguous kind of a movie, whether he really wants what he has been searching for or whether he wants to destroy it. But still, there is a plot for um, you know, a, a quest, there is a plot tracing the que hero's quest. And Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver, again tracing the or going back to the Jason myth. So, I would suggest that you watch Taxi Driver, because this is a movie that we will be discussing quite frequently. What does he uh, search for, Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver? What is he looking for? What is the quest in Re Taxi Driver? Rehan, right? Yeah. yeah. What is the quest in Taxi Driver? No, he wants no. to. That is that, that one point, yeah, to a single man fighting, uh, waging a war against a corrupt system. The immediate quest is to rescue a young girl caught in the web of prostitution, played by Jodie Foster. The Faust myth, the Faustian plot, who was Faust? Who was Faust? Made with yeah. Satan. Faust made, Dr. Faustus, yeah. German legend, he made a plot with the devil. In exchange for something, he will uh, he pledges his soul. After 24 years or so, you have uh, took, uh, complete control over my soul. You can do whatever you want to do with my soul. Yeah. And here we have example in Wall Street, okay, where uh, a young machine almost pledges away his soul to. Watch this movie. We'll be talking about this. So, a story of temptation. Um, a sinister kind of a bargain, and then protagonist faces a moral conflict, the Faustian plot. plot. On a, in a lighter vein, the devil wears Prada is again, you know, you give a one year of your life to me, you know, the, which magazine is that? Runway magazine. Runway magazine and the editor as played by Meryl Streep, Anne Hathaway, the young rookie and you give me one year of your life, almost like pledging away your soul and I will give you, you know, the doors of heaven, doors of unlimited success would be open for you. Um, Al Pacino playing actual, the actual devil in Devil's Advocate to Keanu Reeves' advocate, the lawyer. Rosemary's Baby is a, a, another example of Faust myth. Who is the director, Srinath? Polanski. Polanski. Okay, watch the movie. It's a very ambiguous film. Okay, you really uh, based on a novel by Ira Levin. Yep. So you you really aren't sure that who is the Satan here, who is the devil here. Okay, whether it's the husband, 
okay, or the house, or maybe husband himself is one of the victims or representative of Satan, who knows, but a very strong example. The Orpheus myth, now the myth of Orpheus tells us that Orpheus attempted to rescue his dead wife Eurydice from the underworld. He took a perilous journey to retrieve her and he is, he gets her back, but on one condition that while on the way out, he should not look at her, but he cannot resist the temptation. He turns around, looks at her and loses her forever. So, the Orpheus myth tells you about or the theme tells you about loss. Inception is a very good example of the Orpheus myth. Memento again has elements of Orpheus myth. Watch Memento, we will be talking about the film quite often here. Romeo and Juliet myth, now uh, need not necessarily end tragically, but uh, boy meets girl is a very popular plot in many parts of the world. Love is requited, therefore we call it Romeo and Juliet, not because they end up tragically, but it is a, it's a story, it is a theme of requited love. It may or may not have a tragic or happy, I mean it could work both ways. So, in uh, um, Sleepless in Seattle, boy meets girl and they end up together against all odds. So, that is a happy ending. Titanic of course, is a classic example of Romeo and Juliet plot. They take all the elements. Uh, from our own culture, we can, I can think of Amir Khan's first film, Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak. It is a totally, they take the template of Romeo and Juliet and uh, set it in contemporary times. Um, Tristan and Isolt theme, that is also the title of a movie, I think, James Franco. Love defeated, the idea is the love is defeated and unrequited usually ends in a tragic ending at, at least for one of the partners. So, you have a, a James Khan in misery, where he plays a successful writer and is uh, kept in captivity by an obsessed fan. She would not let him go. So, uh, it is a horrifying tale um, and then Tristan and I saw him in Fatal Attraction, Michael Douglas and Glenn Close in you know dangerously attracted towards a much married Michael Douglas and then what happens. However, you must remember Romeo and Juliet depicts tragedy in pure and honest love, whereas the Irish legend delineates tragedy in guilty love. So, please do remember that these are two contrasting episodes and so these are the seven primary plots. Any questions you would like to, any observations here? Would the movie Shakespeare and Love fall into this category? Uh, which category? Uh, Tristan and Isolde because in the end she Love requited. But it is a tragic ending in the sense that she is already, she has been pledged to be married off to another <coughs> nobleman. So, yeah, yeah, but uh, already taken, yes, combines elements of Romeo and Juliet as well as Tristan and Isol. Yeah, so not an out and out, uh, yeah, but usually that is what is happening in contemporary times. They are not taking the classic template but they are playing around with genres. So, one, one of these uh, days I am going to discuss film genres, where the categories are very well maintained and then genre blending and genre bending. So, how genre, so uh, why is Shakespeare in love the way it is? Because it is scripted by who? Tom Stoppard, Tom Stoppard uh, who is a play. Um, uh, Dogs Macbeth and Cahoots Hamlet, we have already discussed. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. So, Tom Stoppard is a dramatist who is very fond of playing around with Shakespeare. Therefore, okay, so therefore the kind of plot you get in Shakespeare in Love. 
well inception can be loosely categorized as a science fiction movie do not you think so yeah so it is a science fiction it is a futuristic I mean dream within dream within dream what is that okay. but then um, so that it, that it can be categorized as a myth you know the plot is also based on or draws on the Orpheus myth. So, you cannot uh, uh, just be dismissive of these plot categories, perhaps there is a blending of these categories, but they are there. Okay. So, the template is there, it is what the, uh, the screenwriter, the director, um, when they co collaborate, what they do with the elements. Mm. Now, what is Ghost? You remember Ghost, Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze. Well, I would call it a requited love, lost love, Romeo and Juliet uh, trajectory. So, yes. Are all buildings from in movies Cinderella plot or story pursued? Which movie? Buildings from in movies. Uh -huh. Are they all Cinderella plot? Buildings Roma movies are all about coming of age. Okay, so it Lord of the Rings is a Jason myth. Okay, that is quest for something. The hero takes a physical journey, which is also his spiritual journey, ends up in learning certain life lessons. Okay. So, um, not uh, uh, there you can say that this is a very good example of Bildung's Roma, where hero actually learns about something and make takes a journey, physical or spiritual. Okay. Um, to actually say that all these pl uh, plots must fix buildings Roma category is stretching it too much. Hmm. Is it, you tell yes, me. I do not think it fits in any of this. Into but any of these categories? Well, it could be a case of genre blending then. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, therefore, I was thinking, uh, therefore, we talked about uh, Thelma and Louis. Thelma and Louis are not on a quest for some a pot of gold or the mysterious ring, a powerful uh, <coughs> potent symbol of any power or wealth. Okay, they, what are they on? What is their quest all about? Identity. Okay, one day they just feel they have had it enough with um, very weak men in their lives. So, they do not want to put up with that anymore. They take off. It could also be a spiritual, yeah. So, we have to be very careful about it. The movie may not take you on a journey, so it need not be a road movie, but it is, yeah, it is a journey. Rain Man, what kind of a plot would that be? It is a road movie, it is a buddy movie, but the, is there a plot somewhere? Well, you do not have a brother plot anywhere there. <laughs> But it could be perhaps a blending of certain genres. Rainman actually is a, bl a very good example of genre blending. Yeah. Yeah. Comes under that because how uh, they go to Vegas and they do all of that. So that sort of it's kind of like an underdog story as well. Rainman, mm. if you want to put it in one way. Rainman. Yeah. Um, Jason plot comes closest to the plot of Rainman. So, horror and zombie mm. uh, and survival does not come into any of these, right? Mm. Now, horror and zombie, I, I gave you uh, the example of Rosemary's baby, which is a Faustian bargain. Okay, so, that is a very good example. Okay, now, think of all these uh, zombie movies, what is happening here? Is there a bargain? However, understated, whether it is explicitly stated as in Rosemary's baby or implicitly is there. Perhaps, so it could be because all these horror movies, they take their template from, uh, you know, uh, legends of uh, the great Satan, okay. And then we think Satan and uh, devil and Faust cannot be far away. So perhaps it goes back. Is there any movie these plots? Uh, no, I said that uh, there was a time when classic narrative could be. Uh, understood along these terms. So, these are the seven primary <coughs> plots. Now, the trend is that, that we defy genres. So,
So, when you start defying genres, unless you are looking at a very uh, uh, an out and out classically made movie like Lord of the Rings, we do not have uh, a classic plot. Okay. So, classic plot uh, uh, does not exist anymore, but what is what we are witnessing now is a case of genre blending. So, therefore, plots blend, the primary plots are also blending in some way and it has to be otherwise we will have monotonous kind of kinds of movies all the all around. Which Okay, uh, well se seven is also uh, uh, loosely Jason plot, there is a quest, there is a quest for something, there, there are life lessons learnt at the end about ourselves. Okay, so, what I would suggest is that uh, um, you read narrative fiction by Raymond Cannon, narrative fiction contemporary poetics and Gerard Janet, we have been talking about Janet's narrative discourse from the beginning. So, those are the two classics that I would like to talk about, you know, I would like you to consider. Okay, so con, uh, from understanding various kinds of plots, now we move on to understanding conflict as an element of a plot. Conflict as a plot element. So, conflict is defined as an element that really captures our interest, no conflict, no plot, no story, every story needs to have some kind of a conflict. You can think about because our um, especially in our culture in Indian cinema, all narratives are full of conflicts, most of these conflicts are external conflicts, so yeah we will think of we will come to that. Uh, so, conflicts heightens the intensity of our experience arouses emotions and challenges our minds. So, if there is no conflict, there is no story. So, we will be looking at certain plot elements. So, uh, conflict is one element and characterization is another element which we will be discussing in the next class, but today we will continue our plot discussion with reference to conflict. Conflict leads to complexity in plot, even in a story like in a fairy tale like Cinderella, you have uh, uh, an understated conflict between Cinderella and uh, her stepmother and her sisters. To make a narrative in interesting, forces of conflict should be equal in strength and therefore, in all superhero movies, you find that the villain is as powerful if not more than the villain. I mean Terminator is a very good example, Schwarzenegger's Terminator second uh, Terminator, the Judgment Day is a very good example where the adversary is much stronger than the, the protector, the robot hero. So, conflicts can be physical, for example, in western, in the western genre gangster action movies, conflict can I also be psychological. For example, films of Ingmar Bergman, where uh, characters discuss larger issues and not just immediate uh, conflicts, not just uh, uh, defeating their immediate adversaries. So, there are larger issues, what is life, what is death, what is the meaning of uh, several existentialist issues. So, that is an internal conflict, that is very European in concept. Cinema of Fellini, eight and a half, if you have watched, 
How many of you have watched Eight and Half? Wonderful movie. Yes, Eight and Half. Fellini's at Eight and Half is all about. Is all about director's block. You know, you must have heard of a writer's block. A writer, one day he just realizes he can't write anymore. In Eight and Half, our director. Uh, Fellini's autobiographical shades, he just discovers that he can't direct anymore, he has no ideas what to do. So, that is eight and a half. That eight and a half has been remade as a musical called Nine, Daniel De Lewis's. This is a movie, Rob Marshall movie, which we will uh, which uh, we will be discussing in this class soon. But so I would suggest that you watch eight and a half as well as nine, and then we will talk about cin remaking cinema. Uh, Conflict, psychological and uh, uh, physical, there can also be a combination of the two as in John Wayne's The Searchers, when the conflict is as much physical as psychological. 7 2, 7 is also a very good example of both kinds of conflicts happening at the same time. What conflict is this? This is uh, still from the the Godfather, Brando and Al Pacino. And I am more interested in Al Pacino's conflict, Michael Corleone. For the most part of the film, what do you think? Is it psychological or physical? Psychological. psychological. He is torn between his loyalties towards himself, towards what he actually is and towards his family, what they want him to become. So, there is a, therefore, a great performance. Taxi Driver again, Martin Scorsese's Robert De Niro starring Taxi Driver, both kinds of conflicts, combination of both kinds of conflicts. He is a war veteran and he is unable to come to terms with the world around him. Okay. So, he is already on the verge of a breakdown. So, it is not like uh, 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 the external factors just act as a catalyst in taxi driver, My, yes, Travis Bickley. So, yeah. There is that scene where he is uh, talking to himself in the mirror, he is looking at himself in the mirror and he has this long monologue where he is talking to himself. And Are you talking to me? Yeah. Yes. But how is that? A Internal conflict. Yeah, he is uh, not, it is not a very physical uh, uh, conflict. With he is a man frustrated about, frustrated about so many things and he feels uh, almost impotent that he cannot tackle the issues head on. So, he has to do something. So, it go, goes on a killing rampage. Yeah. He has several issues. Uh, if you watch the movie and I would suggest you watch the movie uh, at the earliest and then you will find how racist and sexist Travis, uh, Travis Bickle's a character is. There is a scene where he has a passenger in the back seat and the passenger uh, raves and rants about uh, about his wife who has been unfaithful to him and that role is played a two minute cameo played by Martin Scorsese himself. Mm -hmm. And you will find that how sexist in tone is that uh, that dialogue, that exchange. Even the opening scene where he looks at the city and it is you know it is a very expressionistic scene, green lights green gas, that means noxiousness, poison, everything is there around him. But do we find these green lights and green gases all around us? Not necessarily. Martin Scorsese is telling us that his mind is already vitiate. Okay. There is already, already something, you know, uh, some, something, uh, something really rotten inside his mind and that forms expression in the form of those green lights. We have done expressionism at some point in one of our earlier classes. So, expressionism is nothing but giving uh, uh, a physical color or physical setting to whatever is happening inside. So, inner turmoil is manifested in the external surroundings. So, we watch those poisonous gases and green lights through Travis Bickle's eyes, point of view shot, right? An extreme close up of Robert De Niro's eyes at the beginning of the film. So, watch the film again and ask yourself, 
why does the movie begins uh, why does the movie begin with an extreme close up of dino ro's eyes why scorsese is telling us that he is taking you inside the mind of the of the man so therefore very important to understand uh, otherwise you won't find such so shots in uh, a franchise like die hard extreme close up of bruce willis willis's beautiful eyes you will never find that happening why the conflict is largely physical and external okay so you don't have to understand his mind at all but here you have to understand that this is already a troubled man so external uh, conflict where we have two equally strong opposing forces coming together batman and bane doc ock and spider man let's assume uh, that the hero is all powerful pitted against a weak villain do you think that uh, the intensity of the conflict would remain the same give me some example from our own cinema where you have two equal two equally strong forces coming together we need a strong villain so that hero can be projected appropriately very good example whatever you may think of the movie okay the quality of the films but agnipath has a very strong villain especially uh, in the recent remake played by sanjay dat kancha china's role so as physically uh, powerful or as uh, mm, you know act in fact he is like bane he reminds you of bane yeah an utterly evil character okay so the hero has to muster all his energies including his spiritual energies to fight it's not just a physical conflict anymore okay external conflict can also happen against forces of authority so hero may not be physically very powerful okay but he uh, he has that moral strength all the president's men woodward and bernstein okay so they were not bashing up anyone okay so and uh, they can be against corrupt and oppressive regimes or conditions yes yeah but the hero has to match up yes the hero has to match up to the uh, adversary who may be physically more strong for example in rocky movie yeah, he has to train himself okay to such an extent and he goes to great lengths i mean we remember eyes of the tiger so you know that okay so he has to come up so that's his story okay 400 blows by trufo le quatre cents Coup, where uh, it tells you a story of a, uh, of a juvenile adolescent, and it's his, mostly his internal conflict. So therefore, you find the, the child hero at the end when he is uh, sent to a rehab. He looks at the world through these barbed wires, almost like a little animal cap uh, captured behind these things. So that's an internal conflict. Like there is no external conflict. in the movie on the waterfront combination of both external as well as as well as internal alaya kazans malan brando so uh, watch this movie if possible and then we'll be discussing the film beyond the professional um isn't it to, uh, extremely external a combination yeah one flew over the cuckoo's nest the conflict is against the the corrupt the stifling system 
actually when the uh, when uh, the book was written it was written as a response to the oppressive regime so the hospital become, becomes a representative of a particular system where people where, where everyone is forced to conform and one hero comes uh, along and uh, rebels against the system all the president's men external conflict largely against the corrupt regime robert redford's three days of the condor is another example of one man pitted against forces of corruption directed by sydney pollock we have a film like brave heart conflict is uh, internal of course psychological of course but largely external largely physical gladiator the hero has been pushed to the limit okay and then he rises and again it that i think it responds to your question physically he is no match for uh, against his adversaries i mean we know what he goes through the entire course of the movie but then still at the end he manages to salvage his honor so it's a quest to salvage one's honor okay he has no desire to go on uh, living happily ever after okay all he wants is th those are the famous lines father to a dead son husband to a murdered wife yes that's how he sees himself so external and physical conflict can uh, apart from uh, corrupt forces and corrupt regimes can also be against forces of nature one man against nature so cast away tom hanks playing the modern day robinson crusoe and having conversations with his wilson the football so he doesn't have a man friday he has a football conflict against forces of nature the curious case of benjamin button he cannot fight he i mean he this is a malady he suffers from and he has to live with it again um, amitabh bachchan's pa is an example of conflict with the forces of nature yeah there are no villains there any comment any observation at this point can you think of more examples conflict against nature james man was a uh, okay okay and why do you think that's uh, what happens there gets trapped in a situation where no one rescues him one you get the answer 127 hours yeah so um more about internal conflict no he he's trapped in a situation which is you know a man pitted against the forces of nature and the conflict is internal because he has to make a very tough decision chopping off his hand in order to live on okay that's that's a conflict okay but then largely the conflict is against yeah he doesn't come to this situation having internal conflict the internal conflict is a product of uh, his conflict with the nature for the forces of nature and extremely mighty forces of nature good good absolutely disaster movies um the other day i was telling my son about a movie called uh, it's a very unsuccessful movie and not really well known um a movie of the 80s a hindi film called the burning train the burning train it's a disaster movie where um, Uh, there is a train uh, a super fast train built by our hero and the villain because he is so jealous he plants a bomb in the train and some uh, it so happens that uh, the brakes of the 
train fail and the train is just going on and on and it has all kinds of passengers, a priest, a prostitute, a bunch of children and a variety you know to complete microcosm of universe. So, yeah extremely melodramatic movie. Now, it is a it is a very good example of disaster film, okay, but con that disaster is brought on by a man. Independence Day is a sci fi, right? Contagion. Contagion is a good example. Um, uh, the movie with Tommy Lee Jones, what was it called? Volcano? Yeah, I think there was a movie called Volcano, Forces of Nature. Yes, the day after tomorrow. That is a, um, yeah. Jurassic Park also is uh, Forces of Nature, yeah, but then it is also sci fi. Yeah, so disasters brought. Uh, on by civilization upon itself. In uh, in Hindi movie, in Hindi cinema, we do not have much uh, some any great examples of disaster films. Okay, we have great examples of internal external conflict, but if you look at a cinema movie like Cast Away and all, I cannot think of any example just like that. You can think of something in regional languages perhaps. Other examples? Disaster movies in from regional cinema. It is not a popular genre in our country. Is it a, an Indian movie? Indian plus whatever you want to call it. It, it okay. was released by Fox Cinemas, if I am not wrong. So okay. It is yeah, a bad movie. All right. So, now we are talking about interior and psychological conflict, where characters are caught between two sides of their personality. So, again think Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver. Conflict can also be about how the protagonist <coughs> exorcises the demons within and not just outside. Sometimes that inner conflict is resolved and sometimes it stays unresolved. So, that is the problem with depicting psychological conflict. Yes, please. Uh, he sees all the issues, he ha uh, the state of affairs is pretty bad, mm. but what uh, what balance uh, in against which forces uh, he has to make a decision. I mean he just sees one problem and he has to take up, uh, he mm -hmm. has to perhaps go, go against it. Uh, the movie begins the hero talking to himself and you hear it in a homo diegetic voice over narration, hmm? where he says that I am sick of this world. Now, Taxi Driver is written by, the screenplay was written by Paul Schrader. Okay. Paul Schrader, who has been a constant collaborator with Martin Scorsese, uh, he tells us that he derived the plot of a Taxi Driver from Dostoevsky's notes from underground, which also begins with a famous line, I am a very sick man. The malady is not some cancer or something more fatal, but the sickness of the mind. I hate humankind, I hate mankind, that is the idea. That is what you find in Taxi Driver, even at the opening of the film. He is already, because he has seen so much of a destruction, so many disasters during the war, he is a war veteran remember. It is also a response to the Vietnam war of see all these new age Hollywood filmmakers, who are the three, who are the foremost filmmakers of the new wave Hollywood, Coppola who made Apocalypse Now and the Godfather of course. Uh, you have uh, uh, Martin Scorsese who started his career not with taxi driver or, or even with mean streets, but goes back to who is that knocking at my door. Okay, so, that was a new kind of a cinema. Okay, we will talk about when we talk about gray, you know some select directors. Then also Woody Allen. Woody Allen movies are also largely dealing with internal and psychological conflicts. I mean where is the conflict in any hall if you have watched the movie? Nice people, both of them, meant to live together forever. Okay, in a romantic comedy, things would have ended up very differently for them. 
but here it, it ends very difficult. They have to part ways because the man cannot come to terms with his own inner eccentricities. So, in taxi driver also there are plenty of inner eccentricities. Godat's existentialist hero, Jean Paul Belmondo playing his hero in Breathless, a Buddha souffle, morally ambiguous character, extremely existentialist in his uh, world view, eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, conflict is largely internal or psychological. I think of the deer hunter, which is a very good combination of both kinds of conflicts, internal as well as external. How many of you have watched Deer Hunter? Please watch it, make it a point. You see, uh, one of these days, um, sit down and watch a couple of movies like Any Hall, Apocalypse Now, The Godfather, if you have not already done so, Taxi Driver, watch it again and Deer Hunter. Okay. These are the films we will be talking um, uh, about very frequently in this course. Conflict, internal as well external, do we agree? That is the situation in the dark night, the dark night rises and also Batman begins. So, trilogy is more about internal as well as external conflict. I would say most of the time, especially in the dark night rises, the conflict is within himself with himself. However, you must remember Romeo and Juliet depicts tragedy in pure and honest love, whereas the Irish legend delineates tragedy in guilty love. So, please do remember that these are two contrasting episodes. So, thank you very much. We will be meeting tomorrow. Thank you.